Hello, in this video, I just wanna go over some tips and tricks in Pear Deck that I would suggest based on my experiences. So let's dig right in. Let's start in Google Slides in the actual builder. So the way that I do things is I usually start a slide, ask a question on my first slide. Let's say that I want this one to be a text slide and say that the next question is going to be a text slide also. All I do is I duplicate this slide and then I would change the text on this so that both of these are text question types and I don't have to like keep going and adding and taking the time for that. In addition, say you have a slide already made and you want this to be a text type question, it is faster to just copy and paste the bottom bar than to have to press the button over here because that takes some time. So that's just a little tip. I'll say that normally a lot of mine are like solve this problem and I want students to just do drawing. And so I copy and paste the drawing onto almost all of my slide types. That's just how I do things. Now, one other tip here is that, especially with drawing, I want my students to have as much space on this canvas as possible. And so what I do is you can actually move the bottom bar off of the slide just like that. Just so you don't delete the bottom bar, it's fine. It can be off of the actual area of the slide. And so now you're gonna see as soon as I start presenting that this bottom bar doesn't take up any space on the slide. So I'll show you two different ones. I'm gonna duplicate that slide and one with it on and one with it off so that we can compare the differences and you can see how that affects the drawing. Now I do always use stuff in the template library. So I'm gonna just choose one of these end of lesson slides. And then remember that you can change any of the text on here just don't delete this bottom bar. Again, with this slide type, if you want more retail space or you just don't like the look of it, you can move the bottom bar off the screen. Now let's go ahead and start the lesson. And I'm gonna do instructor paste. And I'm gonna just press continue and navigate to the beginning. And so you can see that I have the bottom bar for this question, the bottom bar for this question. This was the drawing where I had the bottom bar and this was the drawing where I took the bottom bar off. So you can see that. And this one, I also had taken the bottom bar off. Now, what I like to do is when I'm in class, I like to join the same pair deck that my students are on so that I can actually draw alongside with them and write in the answers. So what I do to easily get there is I just click on the code right here and then I click the link, give students a link. And in another tab, I open that up. So now I'm joined as a student in one tab and as a teacher on my other tab. And so now I have the opportunity to also type answers alongside students in case I need that for any instruction or to clarify anything for my students. I like to be able to type like that. If I go back and I show the responses, of course, my answer is going to now be one of them. Something else, say that you're on this question, but you don't need to just be able to type an answer, but you actually need to be able to do more instruction on this slide. And so as a math teacher, that's something I have to do quite a bit. And so it's like, I wanna change this from a text type to a drawing type question. You know that you can't change the question type within Pear Deck, but my favorite thing that you can do is go down to this new prompt and then if you actually go to the third screen, the last one, you can use the same question that you had and change the question type. So what I wanted to do was change it to drawing. So I can easily do that right now. And when I go over to the student view, now I can write. I can also highlight if we're reading a passage together, maybe students were having some difficulty with it, I could highlight so I can highlight and talk. I find that's really helpful in helping students pay attention. You can also be typing any notes as you're talking to help draw attention to really important things. You can change the color of that and you can also change the text size of that. So again, how I did that was I simply went down here to new prompt and let me go back, 
This was the first slide where I have beginning a class, during class, end of class type questions. Then on the second one, I have different question types that I can ask, but the third screen allows me to actually change the question type on the slide that I'm on. In fact, if you have a slide that's just an instructional slide that you forgot to add interactivity to, or you just didn't add interactivity to originally, you can just pull up this new prompt and add some interactivity on the fly, just like that. So that's one of my favorite tips. And what it does is it actually saves it as a new slide. So let me just move this to student pace mode really quickly so you can see what I mean. So it saved the slide where I was typing and then it created a whole new slide where I was typing or drawing my response. So that's really cool too. It just adds another slide into your presentation so you don't lose the work that had been done. Now let's go over to the drawing slide so you can see where I had the two drawings. So this was the drawing where I left the bottom bar. You can see that it takes up a lot of slide space, but if I go over here to the one where I had moved the bottom bar off the screen, you can see now I have the whole entire canvas to draw on. I know a lot of people say that this bottom takes up so much room and they wish it didn't take up as much room. I know I hear you, my only recommendation is command minus sign in Chrome to make that a little bit bigger. Uh, you can also just reset it here. So if you go down to 25%, you can see you have a lot more space to write than when we were in 100%, but you know, that's a little bit of a pain. I don't have a great workaround for that. Now, the other thing I love about logging in as a student is that when I end this session and I publish the student takeaways, that is going to now publish my answers as kind of an answer key that I can share with my class. So that's just something else I love. All right, I'm gonna try and keep this to some of the essentials and those are my favorite tips. So I'll close with that. I hope this was helpful to you and that's it for this video. Bye.